right. So let's talk about resource management, table spaces, and resizing in the Postgres operator, which, you know, as mentioned earlier, uh, is a wonderful new set of features in Postgres operator 4.3. So what is, you know, what did, what, what did I mean by all of this? It's always been possible to uh, fine tune container resource sizes for Postgres and PG Backrest and to a lesser extent PG Bounce in the operator, but it wasn't convenient. And, you know, in, in order to do it, you, you, had, you had to jump through a lot of hoops. So the idea was to make this, you know, a, you know, a top level, a top level feature and just make it very easy for, for people to access. So, you know, the example is anywhere you see a CPU or a memory flag or a CPU limit or a memory limit flag. Um, you know, and so on and so forth. And we made it possible to do this for, you know, every Postgres PG Backers and PG Bouncer deployment as part of the operator. Another big request uh, was being able to easily set the PVC size. Um, and this was actually, this was actually, you know, an even bigger request than, you know, uh, managing CPU memory, mostly because database sizes, you know, vary, you know, so much. Um, again, this was possible in earlier versions of the operator. Uh, 4.3 makes this much simpler as this flag is available. Um, another way to scale out, so to speak, is to employ something called a table space, which basically allows you to write Postgres data to, you know, another disk. Um, the trick with table spaces is having them work in a distributed environment, basically one we have, you know, many primaries and replicas. But, you know, thanks to the operator and orchestration, you know, this is actually fairly, you know, we, we've made it fairly trivial, as in, um, someone on our operator team went through the pain to <laughs> encode all the things to make it trivial. Um, I do want to give a shout out to PG Backrest for, you know, make it very easy to backup and restore table spaces. Um, the nice thing is like all of the above can be fully managed from a custom resource. This is the, that CR only workflow uh, some people have talked about where basically you can deploy all of this via, you know, just, you know, deploying a custom resource, basically an entry in the PG clusters uh, custom resource definition. You can also edit these things and these attributes propagate to the various deployments that the operator is managing. Um, the last thing we'll show is how we can resize a Postgres cluster and actually resize a PG Backrest instance as well using the, the clone feature. Um, as noted in, you know, in one of our internal chats earlier, um, you know, this, you know, you know, this could potentially cause downtime, but if you combine it with, you know, the standby feature that Andrew showed earlier, you can actually do this, you know, with relatively little to, you know, almost no downtime. So that all said, let's jump into the demo which involves swapping screens. One second. All right, here we go. So um, does everyone see something that looks like the matrix? Okay, that, I'm gonna take that as a yes. So let's, so let's uh, start out by you know, doing something related to resource management as mentioned. So I have hey, a Jonathan, cluster. if possible, yes. you may wanna magnify your font just a little bit. Okay. Um, that's great. That's great. Okay, good. All right. So let's, let's create a cluster. So what I did here was I created a new cluster called hippo. Um, I explicitly set my CPU and CPU limits and I explicitly set my memory and memory limits. So that applies to all of the Postgres instances in that cluster. I also set, you know, PG back rest memory request. So a memory request is, you know, please find me a Kubernetes node that has this much memory available. Um, I also set a CPU limit, which basically says, you know, don't let the CPU, um, you know, exceed, you know, this amount of memory. Uh, I set, you know, a, you know, I made a PVC claim as saying, you know, I want to use two gigabytes of disk for um, my, you know, my, my, my primary Postgres data directory. Um, and also I created two table spaces called TS1, TS2. When specifying a table space, you need to uh, mention the storage driver you're using. Um, I have an NFS storage uh, set up in my local environment and, you know, the size of each table space, which I chose to be one gigabyte. Um, we also introduced the ability to uh, have a separate, uh, a separate volume for uh, your write ahead logs. Uh, this is an optimization, particularly with uh, workloads that are very write heavy, is that you put your wall on a different volume, which uh, helps to improve the overall performance of your main data directory. So I just did that for fun and I added a replica. So um, just to show, you know, just to show what it looks like in the CRD real quick. Um, you, know, you can see all those settings you know, are made into the CRD. You can see the PVC sizes are there. Uh, you can see, you know, I, my, where my backrest limits are, where my, uh, my various resource settings are for, you know, um, 
for the Postgres instance, and so on and so forth. And to show that they actually get propagated, um, we can look at, you know, we can look at the deployment for um, the, our, our Postgres instance. So here we can see, oh, here we go. Limits and requests are set properly. And, you know, just to show this actually, oh, that's, sorry, it's, I was looking for something on the pod, ignore me. And we can also see that they got propagated to the actual deployment that manages the PG Backrest repository. So how about disk utilization? Another command that got a tune up in 4.3 was the pgo-df command, which shows uh, disk utilization. Um, for one thing, it's now accurate. For another thing, it's much faster. So if you have to look up multiple clusters, it actually uh, it actually leverages you know Golang's concurrency features, so it can be very quick. Now you'll notice that even though our persistent volume claims are two gigabytes and one gigabytes, um, it's listening the capacity of ten gigabytes. That's because the persistent volumes that I'm using are not dynamically sized; they're actually statically sized um, for you know with my quote NFS storage provisioner. So I you know I set it to be ten gigabytes. Um, you know, you know, that being said, you know, I do have 10 gigabytes available, but the claim is for two gigabytes because the claim is basically saying like, hey, do you have a persistent volume that's available that can store, you know, up to two gigabytes? All right, so I'm going to set up a port forward so we can actually access the cluster. And I'm going to get my user info. This is another, uh, the show user commands, act. actually all the Pico user commands got a major upgrade uh, in this release as well. And we will see some of them. So I'm going to add some data, and I'm going to add some data specifically to one of the table spaces, you know, TS1. Let me get that to start to start running, um, because we're going to see what happens. We're basically going to see the table space disk utilization grow momentarily. As you also see, I have a very underpowered, um, a very underpowered deployment for a lot of different reasons. So it does take a moment. Also, making sure I put in the right number. Yes, I did. So, so while that's creating, um, what we're going to see, actually, if I go to another tab, and it's going to be very small, we can see that our disk is uh, filling up. And we can see now that we've added some data to our table space. It seems I'm still adding it. So yeah, so we can see that we're actually utilizing the table space. This is not smoke and mirrors. Um, this, is, uh, this is a real application. So let's update our settings real quick uh, and being cognizant of time. Um, so now I've updated the settings. Basically, I said, you know, let's have a little bit more CPU, a little bit more memory, um, and, you know, a little bit more CPU uh, available for PG backrest. So this takes a little, this does take a moment, but we can see that one, we've propagated the changes to uh, the CRD. The CRD, remember, is the source of truth for our cluster. You can see here. Everything appears to be updated. We can see that then this, this gets propagated to the deployments. Oops. So we see, um, oh, it has not been propagated yet, but it ultimately gets propagated to the deployments. You know, we can also add table spaces as well. So here, here I'm going to add an additional table space. Again, that's going to take a moment to, to propagate, but um, you know, we can see that the, the pi is restarting, so we're not able to do the df command on them yet. And it's still restarting. But there you go, now they're up. So we've added an additional table space, and you know we can immediately start writing to that. So last but not least, uh, let me show you how to uh, resize a cluster. Uh, what I can do is I can do pgo clone hippo and I create a new cluster called zebra. And I'm, you know, I'm choosing the PVC size to be five gigabytes. So let's get a list of our PVCs. Um, so we can see what the different capacities are, but if we wanna see the specific information about what the claim is, we can look at it. And we see, well, we see again, because it's an NFS, uh, it's an NFS metware I stack resized it. We see that, you know, the capacity is 10 gigabytes, but that's basically how you're able to do a resize via a clone. Any questions?